Okay, so we're ready to start writing some code shortly. One thing I did not do in the last video is give my picture box control a nice meaningful name. This is also an essential control. So um, I, I called that PIC MVCC. I just renamed that before I started this video. So now all of my three essential controls have nice meaningful names. That'll come in handy when we write our code in a few minutes. So um, maybe I'll just run it really quickly just to make sure our form looks good. You hit your run button up at the top, and now we, uh, we're in run time as opposed to design time where we were before. And this is what we see where the, what the user sees when, when they run our application. So the click button, the, the, the button is not functional at the moment because we haven't written any code, but that's what we're about to do now. So I'll just close that and um, we're about to code that button. So what you'll do when you're about to code in what we call an event handler, remember what I said, the user clicking a mouse or clicking a button generates an event in your program and we want something to happen as a result of that event. In this case, the color is going to change, the picture is going to change. So to set up an event, you have to go through the front end here, through the designer, you double click, in this case the button, and then this is our, um, what we would call our button event handler. Okay, this is our click our button event handler here. Um, it, you know, it's just like a, what I would call a curry, curly brace sandwich. That's not a proper term, but it's, it's one that I like to use. So um, whatever code we need to write to make the changes that the user is supposed to experience when the button is clicked will go into this event handler. Okay, this event handler is wired up to that button. It's going to respond when that button is clicked. Um, also notice that I made a comment with the two forward slashes if you want to add a comment to your code. Okay, so in this event handler, we're really just going to change a few um, control properties. Okay, like we talked about maybe changing the form's back color. Now the form, I did not give, a, I, I just went with a default name, Form 1, on that, uh, which is fine. But when you want to reference the form from within the form, like we're in the form, where this is the form's code, you would use the keyword this. So I say this dot back color, for example equals. Okay, now I'm going to change a uh, change the color at runtime. Oh yeah, we're the the, the properties are going to change at runtime when the when the code is when the yeah, when the program is running. So, um, we can use what we call the um, color enumeration. Okay, you just type the word color and then dot and you get this palette of all these different colors. Okay, I know you don't really see a sample of them, but um, you can uh, just pick something and it'll be fine. I think um, maybe I'll go with maybe I'll go with orchid or something just to make sure we can really see the color change. Okay, so um, there is the uh, line of code to change the back color property of the form. Remember, when you're re referencing the form within the form, you just say this. Okay, and then the, the label, we called it LBL message, going to change the uh, text property to something else. I think in the demo we said something like enjoy another lovely semester at Maureen Valley. Um, I'm not sure if that label is going to be wide enough to fit all that, but we'll see. We'll just have to do something about that if it if it gets cut off, okay? This is a stri the string, okay? String data go in quotes, okay? So changing the text property of the label at runtime. And then the picture, okay? I changed the name of that picture box to pick dot, uh, pick mvcc dot image equals Okay, now here's how you're going to change an image at runtime. Uh, hang on, let me see what the name of that second image is. Drilling down into the debug folder where we, where we put those pictures. Okay, so it's mvcc underscore autumn.jpg. I have to remember that. Okay, so we're going to say image dot from file and then 
It's going to look by default in that debug folder, which is why you want those pictures in there if you're changing them at runtime. We said it was, and there's no room for error here. It's mvcc underscore autumn.jpg, we said. Okay, no room for error on that. I mean, there's really no room for error in programming anyway, but if that picture name is an exact, if it's not an exact match to the actual picture name, then your program's going to bomb at runtime. I'll show you. I'll, I'll talk about errors in another video. Okay, so that should do it. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is the text being too long for the label, but what the heck, let's just run the program and we'll see what we get. Now, one thing I want to point out, I'm looking at, look at these tabs. This is, you're going to be going back and forth constantly in this class between design view and the code. Okay, just always back and forth. So you may as well just keep the tabs open all the time so you're just switching back and forth. But if you close one accidentally or you close both, you know where to get the form. You just go straight to that little form icon in the Solution Explorer. And then to get at your code, you really just have to double click anywhere on the form. Um, but I'll double click that button because I know there's code behind that button. Okay, so again, back and forth, back and forth. That's going to be your whole life these uh, this next semester okay all right so let's uh, let's run that we'll test it out okay now I'm at run I'm in runtime I'm gonna click the button oh yeah so um, looks pretty good I think maybe I would um, maybe we can just change the uh, auto size property on that label. I think maybe turning off the auto size was a bad idea on my part. So why don't we see if we can turn that off. I, again, I selected the label. I'm going to put that, uh, turn that back on so the auto size is true. And let me see if I can find, uh, I think there's a way to, yeah, location. I think, um, there might be a way to uh, put the a line. Oh yeah, um, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I was thinking there's there's probably a way to line up the center of the label in the dead center of the form, but uh, I, I I know there's a way. I just I can't. I'm not finding it, so I don't know how the, how it's going to pan out. Well, yeah, I guess that'll look okay when we run it. If it doesn't, fine. I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. This video is already getting kind of long, but let's just go ahead and run that. Okay, we'll go ahead and test it out. Okay, yeah, no, that does not look good. So um, that's okay, we'll fix it. But you can see, I mean, that you know, it's, it's trial and error, and the, this is normal for even just a simple application. Okay, so, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to have that text centered when the text changes. And... Uh, Rather than make this overly complicated, I think what I'm going to do is take a shortcut. And um, what I'll do is I, I'm going to turn the um, auto size back off. Okay, so the auto size is false. And again, this is kind of a cheat, but it'll be just fine in this application. I'm going to make this label super wide, like it's going to span the whole form. Okay, and then um, as far as the, I think there's a text align property. Yeah, text align. I'm going to go with middle center. I think the default is top left. So we'll go with middle center. So no matter what is in here, it's going to be centered. Even when the text changes to a much longer text, it's going to be centered here. So, you know, that's just a, a kind of a temporary fix here. So we don't get too far off the beaten path with, with this program. So we'll go ahead and run that. We'll test it. Okay, and there it is. Okay, so I'm going to end this video, and then maybe we'll tie up some loose ends in the next video.